Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today I'm here for the Scrapbook Nerd online shop and I'm going to be creating a 12 by 12 layout featuring Coco Vanilla Studios Sun Kiss collection. Also in this video I'm going to talk about how scrap lifting yourself is a great way to create a quick and easy layout. I created a layout on YouTube a few weeks ago using this very same page design, but it looks completely different for many reasons, all of which I'll explain throughout this video. I'm also going to show you the original page when the process begins. So you're about to see the supplies I selected. I have paper and embellishments from the Sunkiss collection. This is an older Coco Vanilla Studio collection, but it's absolutely gorgeous and you can still get your hands on it too. Also, the wood grain paper, that comes from Simple Story. So all of these products are available at the Scrapbook Nerd online shop. So I will link up the shop as well as everything I use in the description box below. So here's what's on my desk. And I did prepare a frame style foundation page in advance with three sheets of paper. I gutted two of them and there is a tutorial on my channel where I explain how to do that. So now I'm just showing you the papers I've selected, but I also have a bunch of scraps here. I've used this collection quite a bit and it's been tucked away for quite some time. I just dug it out again. I also have in this tray a bunch of embellishments, mostly from the Sunkiss collection. But now I want to have a look at the original page that I did a few weeks ago on YouTube. Basically what I'm doing is flipping the design here. So I'm going to be doing the very same thing except I'm turning it on its side. And while I'm cutting out the paper parts, I just want to talk about how this is quick to create a layout. Because number one, there's two things I know already. First of all, I know how big to cut these pieces. I've already done the page design. The second thing I know is that when I created this the first time, I found it was a great design to use if you wanted to mix up a bunch of pattern papers. So when I went to select the paper for this particular project, I didn't worry about it. I already knew it was a great project to mix up pattern papers. Now what you see me doing is taking two of the pieces and ripping them, just like on the original design. Now to make that decision for the original design, it took me a lot longer, but in this case, I already knew I liked it. And now what you see me doing is just inking the edges of all of these page parts. And that is something I often do when I use a bunch of different pattern papers and create layers. It just creates a more cohesive look. I'm never heavy on the ink because I'm not a big inker, but a little bit does go a long way. So now I'm placing the pieces of paper on the foundation page just as they are on the original page, but I do end up switching a few things. I'm adapting it to work with my photos. On the original page, the photo kind of overlapped right in the middle of the photo that is on top, but in this case I want to put it a little bit more to the side as to not cover up myself. Now what you see me doing is looking for some photo mats and I auditioned a few different papers and I ended up going with the wood grain off camera. I cut myself out the photo mats and I also used some scrap paper to basically back them. It's hidden behind the photo mat and that way it makes them stand off a little bit off the page because there are a lot of patterns on this page so it does help to have the photos stand up a little bit. So the cardstock helps them pop up a bit and in addition to that the photo that goes on the bottom, that one there I will be popping up on foam adhesive. And I did the very same thing for the original page. So again, a lot of my decisions were already made and that's why scrap lifting yourself is a great option if you are lacking time. So now what you see me doing is simply adhering all of these page parts to the foundation page and what I will do is keep the bottom photo loose for the time being because I did put some foam adhesive behind it but I don't want to adhere that right away because I am going to have some embellishing coming out from underneath it and it's more difficult for me to lift up the foam adhesive. The adhesive I used at the top was okay, but the one at the bottom, the foam adhesive is more permanent instantaneously. Now on the original page, the embellishment clusters 
had bases and they were large circles. So that's what I'm doing right now. I was looking for some paper to cut out two large circles and I end up going with that blue that you see at the top there. And on the original page as well, there were tags in each one of those embellishment clusters. So I found myself some cut apart sheets from this collection. And what you're gonna see me do in a minute with those is simply use a die to create some tags with them. So I'm running through that blue paper through my big shot with the circles and those are three and three quarter inch circles and now what you see me doing is creating tags or more like tag parts you saw that cut apart sheet with the sun there i knew i was only going to have a little bit of it peeking out so i actually cut it in half and that way i can have two tags with a little bit of sun peeking out for this one this floral one at the bottom i end up only cutting out one and now i have three tags to play with and two circles. So I have all of my embellishing around me right now. So you can see that for the three tags, I actually cut out some reinforcers. It was actually part of that die set, by the way, which is an old one from Tim Holtz, but there are plenty of tag die sets in the shop, especially from Elizabeth Craft Designs, one that I want, but I feel guilty to buy it. And I also showed you that I cut out a bunch of leaves there, and that was from an old die set from Lawn Fawn. I did that because you can see I have a floral ephemera pile there. There used to be leaves in that collection, but I used quite a bit of them and I only had a couple of them left. So for that reason, I took a scrap of green paper and cut out a bunch of leaves because I do find when you have a bunch of leaves in embellishment clusters, it's a great way to kind of finish them off. But back to building my embellishment clusters, you can see I started with those two large blue circles, one in the top right and the other in the bottom left. Now I'm tucking in two tags at the bottom there and I will end up tucking one tag in the top. And I'm really happy I cut that sun cut apart sheet into two tags because that gives me a repetition of that sun tag in two spots on the page. So I'm very, very happy about that. And I'm thinking of using this other cut apart sheet, Fun in the Sun, as a title. Now on the original page, I have a journaling box there. So I'm gonna to have to worry about journaling later on, but I'm really liking how Fun in the Sun looks. I also really loved on the original page, I had cut out this circle with these dies here. They are from Elizabeth Craft Designs. It's from a collection called Viewmaster Text Circles. And I'm cutting out the very same one that I did on the original page. It's a circle and it says here now together with you. And then what you do is you cut out a circle to place underneath it. And it's absolutely beautiful. And even though those photos are only of me, I am in Jamaica with my husband and the coordinating pages, he will be on it. So the title does make sense, even though it's only me on this particular page. So you can see me poking out the little pieces and I have it on that white paper. That circle as well is from that very same die set from Elizabeth Craft Designs. Now you can see I have this around me, but I start doubting my choice of color to put underneath my title. So I get out this other paper, which is part of the Sunkiss collection, and I'm thinking I might want yellow. So off camera, I cut out another one of yellow. It turns out I'm not sure. So I actually adhered them both together and what I will do is once I decide, I will adhere those blue words on top of whatever side I choose, yellow or white. But right now what I'm doing is adhering the main parts of my embellishment cluster. So I adhere the circles, I'm adhering the tags, then I'll come in with fun in the sun. And then what I will do is adhere that photo down on top of it. So underneath the photo comes out those words fun in the sun along with the blue circle at the bottom and those two tags. So I'm happy with that. And you can see, or you will see later on, the, this page really does look different than the original. Now I decided to go with the white paper background after all my original choice. And I used an adhesive called Sticky Specs to adhere that blue detailed piece onto that white circle. That one eventually will be popped up on foam adhesive. And now my plan is just to incorporate some floral pieces in that cluster in the bottom left and in the top right. I think I only end up adding one flower in the top right and three in the bottom left. And they're all kind of 
peeking out at the bottom from underneath that title and I'm really happy with it. Now I'm coming in with some of those leaves that I die cut from that uh, die set from Lawn Fawn and I'm tucking them in. So I'm actually really quite happy with it. What I am missing here, of course, is journaling. And I will, like I said, talk about that a little bit later on. But what I do want to mention is I don't have much journaling. So I'm just going to be putting a few lines and basically identifying where I am and the date because that already is a story that is told in this particular album. However, if I had more journaling, I would replace that fun in the sun spot or that circle with a journaling spot. So now I'm just checking to make sure the word you is straight and I'm happy with that. And what I end up doing is coming in and adding some finishing touches, but I lost the footage. Actually, I didn't really lose the footage. What happened is I kept my camera on. So when I created strings for my tags and added circles to the middle of those flowers, and when I stenciled my journaling lines at the bottom, that went on for 14 minutes on video. It was basically the page on the table doing nothing. So for that reason, I spared you from that and I wanted to let you know what I did with this. So now what we're gonna do is have a look at the two pages side by side. So this is the very same page design. The second page, Fun in the Sun, was much quicker to create because a lot of decisions were made. Again, I knew it was a page design that could accommodate many different pattern papers. So I wasn't worried when I was selecting papers for this because I knew there was a lot of white space and the way the layers worked, I knew it was going to work. I just needed a paper collection that would work with my tropical feel. That is it. And basically with different photos, different paper, different orientation, the page looks completely different. So that was a really fun, quick and easy project to make. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the Scrapbook Nerd YouTube channel, we would be absolutely thrilled if you did. And the same thing for my channel, Scrapbooking Quebec. Make sure you head on over to the Scrapbook Nerd online shop. They are, have tons of new products coming in. They are even having some new Coco Vanilla Studio coming in, but they also have this gorgeous Sunkiss collection. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you soon on YouTube. Bye-bye.